Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday the 13th of March. India celebrates Oscar's victory of two films. Residents of Pakistan's occupied territories oppose digital census. And Taliban minister warns those who undermine government deserve death. And now for all the details, the second leg of the budget session of the Indian Parliament began on a stormy note on Monday as lawmakers of the ruling BJP sought an apology from opposition Congress leader Rahul Gandhi for allegedly insulting the Indian democracy on foreign soil. Rahul Gandhi, during his London visit recently, had leveled several allegations, including that the opposition's voice was being stifled in the Indian Parliament. As BJP leaders spoke against Gandhi's remarks, the opposition leaders, especially Congress lawmakers, chanted slogans leading to disruptions. Congress President Malik Arjun Karge responded by saying those crushing democracy are talking of saving it. Both the houses on Monday witnessed a ruckus over the row, leading to adjournment of proceedings for the day. Indians celebrated on Monday after the country created history by winning the Oscars for Natu Natu, the breakout hit from the action movie RRR and The Elephant Whisperers, which was selected as the best documentary short film. India created history at the 95th Academy Awards after Natu Natu, the breakout hit from the action movie RRR, won the Academy Award for Best Original Song and The Elephant Whisperers was selected as the best documentary short film, giving the country two Oscar-winning films in one night. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Twitter said, India is elated and proud. Indian actors also took to social media to celebrate the double Oscar win for India for the Telugu blockbuster RRR and Tamil documentary The Elephant Whisperers. Wife of Kanu Kuntula Subhash Chandra Bose, the lyricist of the Oscar-winning song Natu Natu, was seen celebrating the win at their residence. I feel very proud, very proud, sir, to see our uh, Kiravani Garu and uh, Chandra Bose Garu receiving it. The most proudest moment of my life. Uh, elephant Whisperers, who is very human nature, और इसके लिए गुनीत मुंगिया और उनके डायरेक्टर को बहुत बधाई देनी चाहिए कि एक सिंपल सी कहानी उन्होंने इस तरीके से प्रेजेंट की है जहाँ तक नाटू नाटू का सवाल है देखें नाटू नाटू में तो मुझे खुद ये गाना जो है जब मुझे कुछ नहीं होता करने के लिए मैं गाना टीवी पर लगा कर देख लेता हूँ the Korean embassy in New Delhi also participated in the celebrations with the staff members dancing to Natu Natu and doing the hook step. The fast-paced number has found fans all over the world and has millions of views on YouTube. India's foreign ministry in its annual report has highlighted Pakistan's deliberate failure in delivering justice to the victims of 26-11 Mumbai attacks. In the recently published report, the ministry said there was no let-up in cross-border terrorism, infiltration and illegal smuggling of arms into India from across the Pakistan border. The document said issues between India and Pakistan should be resolved bilaterally in an atmosphere free of terror and violence and the onus is on Pakistan. Reflecting on ties with China, the document has termed the relation as complex and highlights Chinese attempts to unilaterally alter the status quo along the line of actual control. The ministry said the discussions have, however, continued with the Chinese side to achieve full restoration of peace and tranquility at an early date. 
Residents and political activists have opposed the move to include Gilgit Baltistan and Pakistan occupied Kashmir in the digital census by Pakistan. They have raised concerns that the move aims to change the demography of the region while Islamabad continues to deny them any rights. Locals and activists in Gilgit, Baltistan and Pakistan-occupied Kashmir have opposed the first ever digital census by Pakistan, raising concern that it is aimed at changing the demography of the occupied territories while Islamabad has continued to deny them rights. A protest was also held recently in Muzaffarabad by political activists who blamed Islamabad wants to eradicate their special identity. They warned they will not let Islamabad's expansionist ambitions succeed. Locals have long claimed they are not even consulted when Pakistan brings about any legislations or makes such decisions. And they are subject to brute force to muzzle any dissent. They say they are ruled by stooge authorities who only help Islamabad fill its treasuries through economic depredations. Well, Afghanistan's acting minister of higher education and the Taliban-led administration, Nida Mohammad Nadeem, on Sunday warned that whoever destabilizes the Islamic nation must be killed. Nida, while addressing an event, was quoted by local media as saying that those who undermine the government, whether that is via tongue, pen or undermining in practice, all of them are committing rebellion. All of them deserve death. Earlier, Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid had also said they should do so discreetly if anyone complains about those in charge. The Taliban's return to power in 2021 preceded a deepening humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan, worsening issues that had long plagued the country. The Taliban banned women from attending university last December, nine months after the Islamist group barred girls from secondary schools amid a brutal crackdown on women's rights. And Nepal's gross foreign exchange reserves rose 10.2 percent to 10.50 billion U.S. dollars in mid-February, boosted mainly by remittances from overseas to a level that will cover about nine months of imports, the central bank said in a report released on Sunday. Reserves rose from 9.54 billion dollars in mid-July 2022 as Nepalese working abroad sent money home, data from the Nepal Rashtra Bank showed. However, senior central bank official Prakash Kumar Shrestha said, despite the comfortable position in external sector, there is still pressure on internal front of the economy. Nepal imports most essential commodities. A lack of manufacturing facilities due to a shortage of power and reduced fund flows to industries have been hurting the economy. Businesses and industry officials have also protested in recent weeks against high lending rates. An ongoing political rift amongst the ruling coalition has also scared investors and held back growth. And a panel investigating the fire incident on March 5th that left thousands of Rohingya refugees homeless in Bangladesh camps has said that the fire was a planned act of sabotage. The seven-member panel submitted its reports on Sunday recommending a further investigation by law enforcement agencies. Abu Sufyan, a senior government official who led the investigation panel, said that the blaze broke out in several places at the same time, proving it was a planned act and a deliberate attempt to establish supremacy inside the camps by militant groups. However, he did not name the groups. Nearly 2,800 shelters and more than 90 facilities, including hospitals and learning centers, were destroyed in the fire. More than one million Rohingya refugees live in thousands of huts made of bamboo and thin plastic sheeting in camps in the border district of Cox's Bazar, most having fled a military-led crackdown in Myanmar in 2017. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.